before we start. Is there a mover for the adoption of the agenda? Uh, on, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Christians moves. Thank you, Christians. Um, is there a second? Is there any member who will second for the adoption of the of the agenda? Don't get anywhere, you. I second, second. Thank you, Malika. Okay. Yes. I'm here. Thank you, don't get any. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. Um, let me take the opportunity to welcome everybody to this meeting. Um, if the minister and the team is here, welcome. And um, the department, and then also to all the members and the staff members. Um, let's immediately move over to the minister. Um, to give input on this um, department's APPs and our agenda this morning. Sorry, comrades, I am so sick this morning. I'm trying my best, um, but let's continue. Is the, if the minister is in the meeting, I will hand over to the minister. Chair, good, good morning, good morning, honorable members. I'm not sure, Chair, as to whether the minister is here having opened the, the proceedings for the, for the portfolio last week, but I can check with the DG as to whether the minister is here. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, but if the minister is not here, um, the DG can continue. I'm not sure, Chair, this is Bongan Mago from NDA. I'm not sure, Chair, if um, there's anyone from DSD. I don't see their names because they had uh, their meeting, I think, last week. They might not have joined. I'm not sure how we proceed. Now then we must proceed with the presentations from the two departments. It will be fine. I'm, I um, the, the first department can do. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I'm sorry, my, I was just trying to see if my video works. Looks like it's not working. It doesn't show. But my name is Bongan Makomo. I'm the acting chief executive officer of the NDA. As I start, Chair, I'm requesting Mr. Morule to, to load the NDA a presentation of the 2022-23 annual performance plan so that we can we can start. Mr. Marule, if you can load our APP presentation in the meantime. 
Okay. Thank you and good morning, members. May I request the host to allow screen sharing for my end? Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, um, honorable members and um, our colleagues from SASA and in the NDA. I have made, made yourself a co host, uh, sir. Thanks. Thank you. I don't know who well, it is. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, it says making a noise. Is it that that you've connected? Hello. Good morning. morning. Somebody is giving a presentation at the back. Can we just get the department to start? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Chairperson, trying to share. Good morning and sincere apologies for, for, for joining late. Um, oof, sorry, I hope you can hear me. I'm so sorry. I have a bit of connectivity challenges, Chair. Um, uh, I think the minister's in now. I just got a call indicating that uh, we were not in. I'm sorry if I missed the minister doing her remarks. The... Right, we're waiting for the minister to, to make I, her remarks. I'm here, Chairperson. I did make my remarks, guys. You know that. I made my remarks. I covered everyone in that meeting, the first meeting that we had. I'm here because I have to listen to your presentations, but also I have a CAP committee meeting. So my apologies, Chairperson, for jumping in like that. I was I I was thinking I was I thought the meeting had started because I'm connecting to a CAP committee meeting. My apologies. I am here, but I'll be in and out, Chairperson. And I did make my remarks the previous time. Thank, thank you, Minister. Can we continue with the presentation? Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah. I'm not sure who, who has um, loaded the presentation, if, if they can put it in the presentation mode whilst I start so that we, we don't uh, delay the proceeding. If, if uh, Mr. Marule put it in a presentation mode. The, our, our AP, the, the, the purpose of the presentation is to present to the Select Committee on Health and Social Development our annual performance plan for 22-23 and our financial uh, MTEF budget for 22-23 to 22-24. The, the presentation structure it covers uh, the the purpose covers the contextual analysis, the strategy, MTF, and a conclusion recommendation. I will cover the contextual analysis. Mr. Morula will cover the annual performance uh, plan and our CFO, uh, Ms. Uh, Muthen will cover the budget. Just to make few points because I take the the presentation has been read. I just run through the points in the context. We we are presenting an a 22-23 annual performance plan in in a context where the NDA is is completing its turnaround strategy, which which has been forced by the fact that uh, over the years, we our focus is on, on poverty eradication. But the current model that we have been using uh, has not been effective, has not delivered because it has really focused on uh, looking Recording in at progress. It, it, it has been looking at funding 
is small projects that had not really given impact because we all know that we are faced with high levels of poverty, high levels of unemployment. That's, that's, that is really growing at a rate which is alarming. So we, we had looked at the current financial year as a bridging gap that will allow us that the next financial year APP and strategy would have been aligned to the business model, which in it, as we have, we are at the tail end of that uh, turnaround strategy, will be focusing on all of our one impactful project to focusing on, on job creation in which would um, which would want to achieve sustainable growth, more especially in poor community, creating jobs, and we would want to increase our resource mobilization strategy. The next slide. In in an attempt to do that, there are a couple of if you can move to the next slide. It, for us is to maximize the impact on job creation and sustainable economic activities, more especially in poor communities. This will then require us to do a couple of things. The first one is configure our business operation and redesign entirely our program that are focusing on two things, employment opportunities and business and business activities for poor communities. Those two will definitely impact, we have a, a huge impact on poverty alleviation and poverty reduction. The, the second part of it is diversifying and increasing our financial sources. We currently rely on only on the national treasury the allocation through the Department of Social Development. Where else our efforts to mobilize funding from all sources, which include the private sector, the foreign government development agencies, the all government departments, and the turnaround strategy has actually drawn and mapped out what we need to do in order to, to mobilize resources from all of these sources. And the second part it is actually telling us that we got to in, attract funding. And in order for us to attract funding, we have to redesign our funding model such that we focus on big, impactful community-based economic activities that improves the lives of the people in those communities and foster in ensuring that investments that goes to those communities are kept and they kept on revolving within those communities before they can get out of those communities. And that part is looking at how we can assist in coordinating all activities for development that will take place in the district development model without a coordinating structure and a coordinating arm for the, for the district development model. The turnaround strategy indicates that all interventions will continue to be implemented in a silo format. So NA has got a role to coordinate all development at that level. And the last part is modernizing our system. Our systems and get towards a, implementing the requirement of that a, a emerging a turnaround strategy. And we need to improve and foster a better a branding communication strategy for, for the NDA. The strategy is already in a, in a final mode for both a brand and communication. The next page. The, our focus in increasing both funding and, and job creation and skills development is focusing on currently in this financial year, uh, focusing on youth, creating youth. A economic activities and, and employment through the presidential stimulus package have already been allocated 30 million to do that. And that will, will give us around 2,000 jobs. 
that will be created. We also impl implement the idea of funding for, for venture creation program, which really is a, is a mix of job creation and skills development for business, upcoming business entrepreneurs at community level. And we have packaged our grant funding to, to fund cooperatives and find cooperatives that have the potential for, for building their business capabilities in their cooperatives and, and also creating jobs. And within cooperatives, and for study a collaborative relationship across different types of cooperatives so that they can cap targets. And lastly, we have nine pilot sites that we have created within a, the, the, the districts that have been identified by government as, as, as pilots for district development model, where we'll run all of these programs and test this year what is the best way of ensuring that we create jobs. And we, lastly, is we, we, we're, we're shifting our research program to really focus on identifying and debating the gaps that are created by our development policy currently. And our aim is to, and is, is to look at the bottlenecks in, in implementing policy and propose ways within which we can improve the ability of turning around policies into implementable, defined strategic pro program and projects that are geared towards uh, reducing unemployment and ultimately the impact will be reducing unemployment, uh, reducing poverty and creating economic activities uh, for the poor community. I will, I'll just stop there as, as my uh, just high level uh, remarks on the context and I'll ask Ms. Morule to take us to the 20 to 23 strategy and annual performance plan. Uh, do you chair? I can ask Mr. Morule to just take us through that section and after him, uh, the CFO will take us through the budget. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Bono. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, Minister. And, uh, I'm going to make a presentation. It's an essential presentation that Mr. Bono made uh, on strategy and the in particular. We, 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 we have made a number of slight adjustments to the, to the, to the strategy. So what I'm going to present today is a slightly amended uh, strategic plan and a totally new APP. The, what has been said, however, uh, unchanged in the impact statement that we issued for NA, which is just presented at the site as a reminder for the, for the members. The impact statement for NA is reduced levels of poverty in South Africa. The nation's champion in government for society free from poverty, and the nation is a premier development agency that coordinates and integrates development initiatives to better the cycle of poverty in the country. This impact statement, vision, and mission will be affected by the concluded turnaround strategy once it has been signed off. So there will be a few suggestions that are specific to what the impact statement should be going forward, uh, as, as well as the vision and the mission. And the additional things for NDA are, are as listed uh, in the site integrity, accountability, and responsibility. Transparency, respect, Ubuntu, innovation, and excellence. The strategic focus areas for NDA as well as listed in the strategy they have not changed, but there has been a lot of uh, mileage and, uh, and, and achievements made against a number of these key strategic focus areas. I listed around the NDA in around the strategy. The, the, the first one is to get a facilitation of the amendment of the NDA Act, which, which uh, processes have already begun uh, uh, by the Mali Department, uh, where, where it has been received for the, the amendment of the Act. It came with the proposal. And the NDA has made, has, has, which was part of the last, yes, the last financial years, uh, KPIs has made uh, a contribution to the proposition document, which is the number of key bottlenecks uh, in the Act that ought to change. Number one, to also align with the, with the, with the PFMA, and number two, uh, to deal with other bottlenecks that have been identified that are impeding uh, in the development of programs and innovations. The second part is the review of the service delivery model. And this, together with the review of the business model, they are tied to the tenure strategy, in the sense that it is a proposed business model, new business model, which impacts on the service delivery model. In other words, how we are functioning and how we deliver services uh, on the ground. So that, that is already changing. So the tenure strategy is, in essence, uh, a key these two bits. Uh, one, the business model, two, the service delivery model, new proposes. So the, the, the other aspects that are related to the tenure strategy, which are being implemented, is the, which will be implemented later, though, is the strength of the institutional capacity. So one thing that we, that, that we, we need to do is to assess the capacity of the NDA to implement the general strategy and in so doing, we need to understand the skills that are required and, and, and have, have a sense of the personnel that we have in our phone uh, currently so that we come up with proper uh, understanding interventions and all the interventions to show that the, the, the reconfigured NDA as proposed by the general strategy can be fully implemented by uh, uh, a capable workforce. The, the last part is the strengthening of the CSO capacity to deliver on the NDA mandate. At the core of the turnaround strategy is the extension of NDA services by the CSO committee. So we need to be in hand with the CSO committee in relation to their capacity to deliver their ability to extend the the, the development of programs to the community that they are based in. So the, the capacity building program that we are currently implement, implementing uh, will be relevant as, as, as a key proposal in the general strategy, such that uh, the, the CSOs are fully empowered to deliver the under mandate of the NDA in the communities that they are in. The, the, the impact and the outcomes of the, of the as, as listed in the strategy, and I think this is where the changes have been made on, on, on three outcomes and outcome indicators. The one outcome which has remained as it were in the originally tabled uh, strategy plan is good government, the first outcome. Good government. So that's what I'm saying. The outcome indicators as well is to have an effective system in place for good government. And we having we having a specific a particular focus on on, on qualified uh, findings and, and, and having a good base, which process is already underway. 
The second item relates to the objective strategic partnerships in the development goals. We want to raise results to the value of 275 million uh, over a five year period. We, we, and then we come, we come in, uh, I think, from a baseline of 55 million. So, so, so already in the current budget year, we have raised, I think, more than, more than 50 million uh, for what is 275 million. So, efforts are, I think, are fully underway to ensure that the 275 million is reached by the end of the you know, five year MTSF period. The third, the third uh, outcome is on sustainable systems that provide value services to deprived communities and demographics. Uh, and, and we're looking at a number of CSOs that have been transmitted by the AIC and the, the funds that have been, the percentage of funds that have been dispersed to CSOs for poverty reduction. Our target is 80% of all funds is for CSOs that are the education initiatives. The last and final uh, outcome is appropriate development policy through population and we're looking at having formal dialogue to promote change development policy. The, 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 the target of development and dialogue that we want to have is 20 uh, over five years. This is primarily from the research that we are undertaking, looking at looking at uh, it, uh, uh, you know, topical, topical uh, issues that, that are right to the on, and therefore we are not by, by CSOs, government, and members of the RDA as well. So those are the, those are the specific changes that have been affected, uh, that the plan has been affected uh, in the APP document as well. I'm now going to go into the, the APP starting with Program 1. Uh, the first indicator on Program 1 is percentage reduction of non-compliance result in IMW expenditure reporting. The, 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 the target for 2023 in particular is to have 80% reduction of non compliance resulting in regular fruitless and wasteful expenditure reporting. And our content targets will, will increment from 20% to 80% by the fourth quarter, which correlates with our annual target of, of 80%. We members have received uh, you know, quarterly reports in the SSE annual report for the last year, where we have been, uh, uh, I think, putting in place mechanisms and uh, efforts to ensure that we, we deal with this. So there's been some, some you know, ground uh, covered in relation to you know, this 80% particularly what the target was for, for last year. And as there has been there's been quite a lot of lessons learned and, and efforts made to ensure that we are continuously uh, able to you know to reduce the problems that we never experienced to the extent that the combination the combination requests that have been sent to the has since been uh, in respect of the 21 22 uh, 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 target. So the effect that it has on this target is that the lessons learned from the in the requirements of coordination being uh, be met by us as the agency towards our general requirements will be in place. And many of them have been put in place to ensure that this 80% uh, is realized by the end of the financial year. For the for the two other financial years uh, uh, for part of the NT EF, we have 90% and 100% total reduction by 24 25 uh, uh, funds year. The second indicator relates to ICT strategy and architecture that NDA business model approved and implemented. Uh, our targets have the approval and the implementation of ICT strategy uh, in the 22 23 year. So the, 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 the draft general strategy has already proposed a business model. And this business model has to, has to set on an ICT architecture which we should, we should work as a business model forward and determine the different business needs and enterprise wide needs you know, for the implementation of the business model. So it is important that we realign our ICT strategy which we've had in place at least since 2016 and ICT master plan which was approved two years ago. So we want to revisit it and align it to the proposed business model so that it will run, uh, to run in sync and the strategy, the ICT strategy and architecture seeks to implement and advance the, the, you know, the specific uh, environments for the business model. The, the, the specific quarterly targets will be looking at the, the current SDIT architecture so as to review it and tell how far how far uh, apart is from the business model and what needs to be changed. And in order to look at the you know the requirements for to be IT architecture design, you will, you will have it approved by the board in quarter three. This is the ICT strategy and architecture and have it implemented in, in quarter four. The next indicator relates to the organizational structure and the business model. I think the specific requirements from the from the general strategy. It proposes how it should be continued going forward. It, it makes new proposals of, of uh, organizational uh, restructuring. Uh, and as a result, uh, it was important for us to, start to focus on, on the, the, the KPI of having a new organizational structure like this, so as to align the structure to the business model so that the two are in sync. So we'll be pursuing even the the financial year, the approval implementation of the organizational structure that is already aligned you know, the, to the business model. And I think in line as well with the ICT strategy, keep it just that we need our own current, uh, current organizational structure and, and, and where the mismatch is between it and the proposed business model. So that when the organizational structure, the proposal is put in place, uh, the gaps have already identified and, and the proposed organizational structure seeks to plug those gaps. And, and, and accordingly, you will have that uh, full, full aligned and approval uh, by the board for implementation of the form. The next indicator, indicator looks at the strategic partnership model aligned to the business model. We, we, we have strategic partners in the form of CSOs and, 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 and government departments and other agencies outside of the government as well, for the government. So we need to put in place uh, a strategic partnership model for India. This comes uh, on the back of the state and CSO partnership model, which we work on and develop uh, in the previous financial year. So we want to work on the, on the, on the, uh, the engagement out of the state and CSO partnership model as it was developed to develop a more specific and a strategic partnership model. Basically, to say how do we, how do we interact with strategic partners and what they want to drive out of those uh, strategic partnerships and what do we cooperate and collaborate on and what are the, the, the those engagements that were you know, in such cooperations and what kind of business, what kind of cooperations, cooperations will, will, will we pursue you know, to ensure that the development of the communities and what kind of we will not pursue. So as to make sure that our business is more, is more focused and is more uh, targeted towards particular partners, you know, strategic partners in particular business world. So we'll be pursuing the approval there of, uh, of the strategic partnership model in 2022 and 2023. 
for implementation in the, in the future years of the MTF. Uh, in, the, in the next decade, which is important too, we'll be looking at the range of resources raised from MBA partnerships of five years of the fifteen years. We're looking at the 35 million from MBA partnerships. So this is some of these partnerships, uh, current partnerships that we have. Most of our partnerships are government based. So these are government uh, departments, but we want to we want to increase our reach and coverage as as the diverse section of like where we start raising uh, quite seriously funds from, from outside government in the private sector, but also uh, the actors joins us to raise funds from foreign governments and, and agencies outside outside the government. So so with the strategic partnership model that we want to be placed and the resource mobilization strategy that we want to be placed, we should be a derivative of the, the strategic partnership model. We will not start targeting uh, uh, you know other funding sources outside outside of government, but still ensuring that within government we raise sufficient resources. Our target is 35 million uh, in the 2022 financial year, 35 million in 2024, and 55 million in uh, in, in 2025. Primarily, what is informed our target was was, was a low base that we came from. I think we raised around about 20 million or so, and this was as a result of a question brought about uh, the COVID, where where we began to raise uh, I think close to 20 million in business. But in that, since that in the COVID, we were unable to, to raise as much as we raised before, so we had to lower our our base. I think with the introduction of other funding sources, we should be able to raise this 35 million. The, the next indicator is the number of work opportunities, and the, the, the CEO had already spoken, I think, at length about, about this indicator. We're looking at 18,000 work opportunities. And these work opportunities that the CEO presented will be coming from new venture programs that we are implementing through uh, funding coming from the UIF. We have a collaboration partnership with UIF around new venture programs with the, with the lastly, uh, 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 recruiting youth, uh, youth uh, unemployed youth, you know, to, to introduce them to new venture programs that they can, that they can enter into. The, the second one is on is on the stimulus package, the stimulus package which we were granted uh, 30 million uh, from last day October, November. So we fully implemented in 2023 financial year. You know, and out of that, it's expected that we will have about 2,000 or so work opportunities. We also have in our own grant funding uh, a specific focus where there are requirements for job. There's a requirement for creation. As we fund, as we fund these uh, organizations, particularly income generating organizations, there will be an expectation of creation of uh, work opportunities. So the total aggregate value of work opportunities to be, to be created in 2023 financial year will be 3,000. The, the next indicator is on the CSO capacity that to strengthen their institutional capacity. I already have spoken at length about the need to empower CSOs with specific uh, intelligence in the form of in the form of uh, uh, content courses that that, that, that we that were rent uh, in the NDA. So these are specific these are specific interventions on financial management, on, on project management, on 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 even the affirmation project management as well. I think I think this situation that in relation to governance, these particular CSOs are able to operate sustainably because what you know the challenges that we said these these CSOs are largely around their Lack of capability, you know, but here to governance and to run the business in line with financial management principles. So these are the, the benefit of the interventions that are process that we render in this uh, in this particular CSOs. We're looking at 2,000 CSOs you know, for training on all such interventions that we render in the in the 2,000 CSOs in 2023, and this will increment by 500 uh, in the two in the two outer, uh, outer years. The, the the next indicator which relates to our, our core mandate is the disbursement of funds for grants that we have. We look at 25% of funds disbursed to CSOs, you know, to ensure that they're able to gather development interventions in the uh, in the counties they're based in. As I said, the focus, the link between uh, uh, this indicator and the creation of opportunities, particularly in relation to income generating uh, CSOs, where we are targeting income generating CSOs, uh, and the requirement uh, there is for them as we contract with them, the requirement is for them to create opportunities and to report uh, accordingly on such opportunities, which, which goes a long way demonstrating how our funding has become you know, beneficial in respect to only that goes to a CSO, but it's funding that goes to the you know, that creates the opportunities that can be assessed by members of the community that the CSOs are listing. So the target is of 25% of these funds discussed. This is specific to uh, uh, you know, the budget that has been allocated for grant funding. Uh, as, 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 as like from the allocation from national program. So all such funds will be at 95 percent of funds first. And I think in the previous years we have been able to uh, deliver more than uh, more than 90 percent of such funds, 95 percent. The the last indicator on program to reduce social development in the business and what is more these new programs aligned to this development model. This is where we 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 see the need for, for coordination on the ground of developing partners, particularly for the business development uh, model as well. The the and, and this is what one of the key things that was raised by the I think the in the business development model as well. That on the ground there's a lack of coordination of development partners, and therefore the all the development and aid that is going towards communities is uncoordinated as well. What we'll be doing in relation to the business development model, but also implementing the new the revised business model for the NDA. We just identify pilot sites in the business and developing in identifying these pilot sites. We also identify we, we, we undertake communities, in other words, we communities that this business that will be relevant. We identify what, 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 the, what the communities are, we offer these communities, we make intimidation assessment of the development partners in that particular community or in that particular district, and we we, we then coordinate development was to ensure that whatever is developed in that community in line with what the program to be is aligned by all development partners. And it could be within government, whether it's the department of water, the department of housing, the department of agriculture, all government, uh, all government partners and private partners as well that are present in that particular community to ensure that development is coordinated and, 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 and it's seamless in going that particular community. With NDA being a center of uh, assessing community needs and, and, and coordinating development in that particular community. So that's exactly what this pilot, this pilot uh, will be doing. Piloting is piloting what, what is proposed in our, in our business model because the essence of this is also derived from our own uh, challenge that the business model is proposed in. And, and, uh, and, 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 but to do it in a manner that fits, that fits the, the the specifics and ideas of the district development model. So we'll be looking at nine pilot sites uh, altogether, which will be pursued uh, in, in threes from quarter, quarter two to quarter four. So it wouldn't be nice. So quarter one will serve as a 
extreme variation of this, you know, of this, uh, the three mutant sisters in, in children that we are able to successfully cover in, uh, in the three quarters of the last quarter of the uh, On in program three, uh, the, the, the first indicator is the number of research publications which provide a basis of the policy. We are doing three research, uh, three research publications in the 22 23 financial year, and we will be doing four in 22 24 and 24 25 financial years. In, in, in the three research publications that we will, that we will undertake or that we will uh, uh, produce, the first one is on, on transformation of operations, the second on skills development intervention, the third one is on the transport sensors, and the third and final one, uh, which we are taking in quarter four, will be on the whole series of the species that you can see that is the uh, other. But in the third lessons that we have, we have yet about that, but we want to document them in the form of research and, 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 and get more voices in. in in, in the civil unrest, where, where the desktop, the desktop uh, assessment has already done. But we want to introduce this formal research uh, through which we can tell what, what the specific goals are, uh, as these speakers in particular, in civil unrest in South Africa. The next indicator is on. Uh, yes. Uh, sorry, and the last one I was discussing is having a challenge. I want to remind you that I must make sure that you are familiar with that because we have another relation. Okay, thank you, Michelle. I'll speak it up. The, this next indicator deals with uh, evaluations conducted through control design and implementation. We'll be making evaluations in uh, 22 financial year. One focusing on uh, NDA funded income generation projects, uh, another focusing on the evaluation of the NDA implemented current program, and the final one on the evaluation of the NDA funded uh, projects. The last indicator will be focusing on dialogues uh, held with external stakeholders in development policy. Again, as I said earlier, this is core to our second mandate, which is focusing on uh, influencing and debating development policy. So, all the research that have been undertaken in the some in 21 22 financial year and others in 2020 financial year in the area of us will be dialogued in from quarter one to quarter four. And this, this ends the, the, the APP presentation, but linked to this is the NTEA budget, which, which uh, is the budget that will be implemented uh, in line with the APP. May I request that we should share uh, the CFO currently?
there's a new case of area homes uh, with old profit. Um, I do now have uh, almost uh, 37 percent of people relying on social grants because of the of the of the impact um, COVID and unemployment has continued to impact on us. Our main focus for 2022 20, is mainly for us to continue to focus on poverty reduction, providing a uh, temporary relief in terms of individual services that are impacted, uh, also addressing the technical challenges uh, for beneficiaries. But in the area, our, our processes tend to manual and this uh, does in terms of confuse, uh, whereas we are beginning to make the that we need to do for us to make sure that we improve on these uh, particular challenges to address the need of our people. We continue to invest in the systems that enable migration uh, from manual processes for us to make sure that our systems uh, are automated. The issue of improving customer experience needs to be also our focus and to uh, continue to trust money and development opportunities. Pachinan for SMEs and corporates uh, will continue to get 50% of our budget and we allocate Pachinan to our purchases. Uh, and this is the biggest focus with regards to uh, areas where we focus on and on, on, on relief programs. In developing the APP in this year round, we focus on the process increase that process uh, in order to make sure that we engage uh, all our uh, managers uh, the process and that's how we have strategic conversations to ensure that um, we focus uh, on strategic issues that we want to make us started on uh, at the beginning of the, of the administration, but that we need to make sure that we process as quickly as we can so that at the end of the administration we will be delivered on those. We also participated in the, the sector strategy that was organized by BC and we also ensure that we, as we look at the Ohana view, we also engage the minister in, in January and end of March to make sure that there's alignment with the portfolio as a whole, but over a market that we also uh, get the minister involved in terms of the process that we will be focused on. In line with the, the revised framework of the strategy and our plan, we also ensure that the final year was built at uh, EXO and we ensure that the agent has also moved uh, to ensure that there is alignment in relation to all the areas that we need to focus on. So the, the intention in line with the, 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 the time when we start the process is not to make too many changes, uh, but to continue with the transaction uh, that we need to focus on. We also introduced the protection increase that highlights the infrastructure that we have uh, as an institution, which is the front network, the regional offices that we have, mobile trucks that we use in many instances for us to make communities, and also the payphones that we currently use to make sure that we produce the payphones, the open payphones in particular. We currently have one national call center, even though we have help in the regional offices, offices that we have. Currently, our call center is only five people, and national level, with the other people that we source uh, through uh, as we start to get them, with the difference between the cost of the share and the cost of 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 in terms of the work that we ensure that we have to do the ADP, we align our programs with the national plan, that we also look at the performance of the framework that is expected for government overall, and also look at what the portfolio is going to do in terms of the ADP, as well as in line with how the performance of the ADP is going to be in 2019, but also making sure that we review and look at what the state of the national is, and also watch what applications we have to make sure that we align all the work that we do at government overall. We look at the national process in particular, we look at our mailings in particular, make sure that we align these with the portfolio, but also look at the principles for us to make sure that we focus on how we treat our customers, and in particular, make sure that we as a leadership team, as well as the staff that we need to take some solutions, and hold each other accountable, and take that opportunity to try to achieve. And in terms of outcomes and focus, we want to reduce levels of quality on transmission, improve customer experience, and make sure that we improve our efficiency so that we can deliver the whole team in terms of the APP uh, packets that we currently have, uh, for program one, uh, we have added four new packets, uh, but uh, there's uh, uh, now 17 packets that we keep getting from program one, and uh, program two, uh, the new packets are seven, and the total number of packets are 17. So there are some packets that we're going to continue, and some that we've discontinued. For, for us to make sure that we, we, we complete the process uh, of coordination uh, and are able to take questions, I will then ask um, the packets to go straight into the different uh, uh, programs, and uh, so that we can be able to highlight to the uh, committee as to what we have in program one and program two, and we should also look at uh, the interventions that we're going to focus on so that we can have time for us to time. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you.
Thank you. 